Good evening. Before asking for your votes, I think that there are four questions that you should have answers to. These questions are, firstly, what are my values? Secondly, what do I propose to achieve by standing for the seat? Thirdly, am I competent to achieve that? And finally, what will be my strategy to achieve what I set out to achieve? So firstly, I'd like to discuss with you a little bit about my values. I'm a family man. I'm married. I've got three children. I run my own business. But I'd like to talk more about what is my concept of government and why I've decided to become involved in politics. I believe that the role of government should be similar to the way in which good parents look after the interests of their own family. That's to say that with parents, you don't find them identifying certain factions within their family and looking at how they may best represent the interests of that particular faction to the detriment of other people within the family, but good parents will always ensure that they make decisions that represent the interests of everybody within the family. Now, if that described the situation of government in this country, I would be continuing to do my job in business and I wouldn't have any interest at all in getting involved in business. The sad reality is that that is not the situation that we find ourselves in. And that is why I, I'm motivated to get involved in politics. Now, I only became a member of UKIP last month. I've been receiving literature from UKIP, as I mentioned, uh, for about 20 years, since before UKIP was called UKIP and when it was called the Campaign for an Independent Britain. So I've always supported the ethos the ideology of UKIP since being a teenager, but I've only decided this year that it's worth it to give up my full-time job of running a business and to delegate the majority of my responsibilities to my staff, to spend a lot of time away from my family, which is what it's going to take if I'm going to run an effective campaign, and to devote myself pretty much full-time to running an effective campaign in Cardiff South and Penarth. So I hope that's given you a little bit of of an idea about my values, I'd like to talk about my goal. Now, I'm aware that many candidates for UKIP are standing um, as a gesture of protest against the establishment, simply because it's not realistic to expect that we can find candidates in every constituency who can devote full time to running a campaign. But I'd like to make it very clear to you that that is not my motivation in standing. I wouldn't give up what I've already described that I'm proposing to give up if you elect me tonight for the sake of a gesture. I'm standing because I genuinely believe that we can win Cardiff South and Penarth. Now, I'm fully aware that it's been a Labour seat for 31 years that Labour had a majority of 4,709 votes in the last general election in 2010. I'm aware of these challenges, but if you'll allow me, I'm going to describe to you circumstances that I've been faced with in the past where I had a goal <coughs> to overcome, where the odds were very much stacked against me. I was 21 years old. I went out to Africa with the intention of climbing the three highest mountains. My background is in expeditioneering. That's uh, cycling across continents, climbing mountains, that kind of thing. And my particular objective in the year 2000 was to climb the three highest mountains on the continent. So I had no problems with Kilimanjaro and Mount Kenya. But when I got to Uganda with the intention of climbing Mount Stanley and the Ruinsori Mountains, I was told that the National Park was closed and that I wouldn't be allowed to proceed into the National Park and would not have access to the mountain. Now, I'm sure you'll agree that most people, when told by local authorities that a national park is closed and that it's not possible to proceed, I'm sure you'll agree that most people would give up at that stage and come home with a, a good excuse for failing the mission. What I'd like to get across to you is that it is not in my nature to take no for an answer if I'm committed to trying to achieve something that I believe is worthwhile. So what I did do was liaise with the local district commissioner. He put me in with the army. Within about two days, I'd been referred up the chain of command and was dealing directly with 
Brigadier General James Cassini, who was at the time the commander of the Ugandan People's Defence Force. And I was able to persuade him that if he would supply a platoon of soldiers to me, I could lead a patrol. I'd been trained by the Parachute Regiment in the British Army. I could lead a patrol to flush out any guerrilla sections of terrorists that were operating in that area. Because you may or may not remember that in 1995, what had happened was Intera Humwe had moved into that area and had slaughtered... Um, tourists, mostly Americans and British, and um, so the area had been closed to tourism for five years because of this insurgency. So they were losing a lot of money, they weren't getting any revenue through tourism to Western Uganda. So what I proposed to Cassini was, if he gave me a platoon, we could flush out um, residual sections of guerrillas and we could restore tourism to Western Uganda. I'll cut the long story short and tell you that the mission was a success. We were able to climb, I say we, I was with a friend who sadly has since deceased. Um, we were able to, to summit that mountain. We completed our mission and in return I agreed to go and meet with President uh, Yoweri Museveni, uh, President of Uganda in um, State House in Kampala and to give interviews to CNN and to news reporters um, where, I, where I told these reporters that I believed that Uganda was perfectly safe now for tourists. And as a consequence of that they were able to reopen Western Uganda to tourism and they've enjoyed tourist revenues for the last 14 years ever since. So I, I hope that that communicates to you something of my resolve, my determination, my fighting spirit and my unwillingness to take no for an answer. Um, finally, I'd like to discuss my proposed strategy if you elect me. If indeed you elect me tonight, I have provisionally arranged to meet with Mr Andrew Price uh, on Thursday in London. Andrew Price is a graduate of the University of Wales. He has 40 years campaign experience with the Conservative Party and uh, he has proposed to be my campaign manager. Having met with him on Thursday and discussed our strategy for the next 200 days together, we will go together to Rochester and to meet with our colleagues there who are running a the campaign we know a lot about already and I, I hope to imbibe as many ideas from that campaign as possible and bring them back and implement them in Cardiff South and Penarth. I'd also remind you that I, I do run a business. Um, we are the third largest within our industry against 494 competitors. We employ 700 members of staff and so we have quite an active um, marketing campaign. I propose to take a lot of the methodology that I've developed through my business activities and to implement that into a campaign run in Cardiff South and Penarth, particularly with the use of websites, with leaflets that directly link to uh, a customised website that is for our constituency and with feedback mechanisms within the site that show our constituents that we're interested to hear from them and that that is what we're there for, to serve them, to get their ideas, to understand how best we can serve them because that's what we're here for. So finally, in closing, I would ask you, please consider voting for me and if you do, please be assured that I will be entirely committed to this and thereafter, please give me as much of your support as possible in terms of your ideas so that I can go to Parliament I can fight against the establishment, I can contribute to wresting back power from Brussels and putting it in the hands of the British people, where I hope you'll all agree it belongs. Thank you very much.